Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today, we're making the shoulder shrug. Love me a good shoulder shrug. So the great thing about this, it's basically just a rectangle in double crochet, but using a textured yarn. So it, it looks a bit fancier than it is. And we're just working in between the stitches so you don't have to find your stitches. And it just kind of covers up a sundress to make it a bit more multi-seasonal. To make the shoulder shrug, I am going to be using this Polar Eyelash. It is very similar to Polar Soft, available on iceyarns.com. There will be a link for it in the description box below. But you're welcome to use any yarn at all. A really good project for, I wouldn't say beginners because it's a textured yarn, but definitely once you have some confidence, it's totally, it's just double crochet. So you can totally do it. These are 50 gram balls. 100% polyamide, 50 grams, 100 meters. And they say it's a size five for bulky, but it's not actually that bulky. I would, I would consider it like a four worsted weight, perhaps. So this is what I'm gonna be using, but you're welcome to use any yarn you'd like. It would also be great in cotton or any yarn that is soft enough and that you wanna keep on your body. So whatever yarn you're using, just get your ball ready to go. I'm going to be using two crochet hooks, one to make my chain. I'm gonna be using a seven millimeter to make my starting chain. And I'll be using a six millimeter for making the actual shoulder shrug. You'll also need your scissors and a darning needle later on. So make sure you start with your big hook, put your regular hook that you're gonna be using farther away. If you're using a different yarn, just use whatever crochet hook size they call for on your yarn label. Now how you're gonna decide how long you want to make your chain, you're going to measure from one wrist all the way up across down to the other wrist. So it's a bit hard to show you, but I'll take my measuring tape and I have it in that hand. So I'm gonna measure my arm span. Oh, there's it all stretched out. There we are. So it's about 54 inches. You don't want to make it exactly as long as you want your uh, shoulder shrug to be because crochet will stretch, it'll hang down. You'll probably get about two inches per sleeve just from wearing it. So maybe I will be making mine about 52 inches. So now I'm gonna start by making a slip knot. So just make sure your working yarn is over your hand and just make a slip knot. Now with this fuzzy texture, it is a bit more delicate, but it is worth it. So don't pull it super tight now. You wanna get it all shrunk down to the right size before you make anything tight. Just pull it down, put it on your hook, and now we can tighten it a bit. So I'm gonna be doing my chain in sets of 20 just so I can keep track of my stitch count. So to do that, we're just gonna chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Actually, I'll do 10, that's easier. So we can't really see our stitches at all. So I'm just gonna put my stitch marker right on that loop underneath my hook. Just right there, put a stitch marker. So that means there is 10 uh, chains. And I'm not making tight chains, I'm just doing a nice loose chain. So 10 more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we'll put another stitch marker. One more stitch marker just on that, that chain right underneath. There's a V, hopefully we can see it. There's this V right here. Each one of these Vs is a stitch. So that V right underneath the hook gets a stitch marker. So we've done 20 and 10 more. So keep going doing your sets of 10 chains with a stitch marker to mark them until your chain is the length you want it to be. Mine is gonna be 52 inches. 
So pause the video and I'll meet you when your chain is done. So my chain is finished. I made it 51 inches long and 120 chains with the seven millimeter hook. So now I'm going to take out my hook and put it very far away from yourself. I'm gonna put mine way up on the shelf, grab my six millimeter. That'll keep our chain from curling up or being too tight. And now comes the tricky bit. So working into our chain is a real pain in the butt. It's fiddly, it's slow, it's tedious, but we're gonna get through it and then it's gonna go really fast. So we're gonna chain one, wrap our yarn, skip a chain. Now our chain, it, we can't even really see it. It is a pain in the butt, but it is worth it. So it also helps because we have our stitch markers here, so we know that there are 10 chains in between those stitch markers. So we're just gonna go in, our, our stitches, sometimes you can see them here is a V, and another V, and another V, and another V. So these stitches here, these Vs, those are each a stitch. So that is what we're looking for. And after this, we can use our fingers just for feeling, but we're just gonna wrap our yarn and go in to where our stitch marker is to make our first double crochet. So grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. So we're gonna do that into every single chain going along. Just take your time and go in. Our next one, actually we can see it for a change. We've gone into this one because that's where our stitch is going into. We've gone into this one. Our next one is right here. And then there's one right here, one right here. So we're just gonna keep working down our chain. It does not matter if you go into one, you have one loop on your hook, like if you go into, just have the one strand on your hook, that's fine. Double crochet. And into the next, into the next stitch. Just gonna be somewhere in there. We're just gonna go down. And we know in between these stitch markers, we're gonna be making 10. The next round will be able to tell a lot easier, but for right now, we are kind of guessing. So our next stitch is in here. We can kind of see a bit of a V. And then there's another one here. Next one right here. Just make sure you do get the yarn onto your hook. You don't wanna just be going into the fuzz. You wanna make sure you have, you've gone into the stitch. So it looks like that so far. And if you wiggle back, you can wiggle your fingers and I can see and feel that, that this double crochet is into that spot. So I know I finished that one. So the next one, <laughs> way over here, this little guy. I've gone into here, now I'm going here, here, and here. The yarn, the, your, your, your chain can twist so you're working into the back, so just kind of keep it twisted around or twisted around until you see a little bit of some V shapes. And then just kind of use your fingers. This bit is pretty much by feel. So again, not what you want to start out with. This is not going to be your first project. This is definitely an intermediate yarn. I think my next one's going to be at that stitch marker. So now, let's pull up a bit of a loop. We should have 10 double crochets, not including our little chain at the beginning. So and how to tell your stitches. Now you can wiggle your fingers in between. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, plus a little bit at the beginning. So that is exactly what we wanted. That's great. So we can just check in between each of these uh, stitch markers that we have 10. 
If we don't have 10, just put an extra one in, basically. Nobody's gonna see. You can't see your stitches, no one else can see them either. So that's the blessing of it. So now keep going, poking your way along this chain, one double crochet into each stitch that you think is a stitch, and I will see you at the end. Keep working, just feeling your way along until you get into the last chain, which that for me it is that guy right there. I think it's finished. But we can just count to make sure we have 10 past our stitch marker. Two, just wiggling our fingers. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Yeah. Great. So for this pattern, we're gonna do a special kind of turn. We're gonna chain two and turn our work. I'm leaving my stitch markers in just as a guideline in the future. So our chain two is going to count as our first double crochet. We're not doing a chain three just because we don't want a big loose edge. We want it to be a bit more straight and tight, which is why we're just doing a chain two. Now wiggle your fingers and that's where we're gonna be putting our stitches, is in between these posts. If you're an experienced crocheter, you are welcome to work into the stitches. You will be able to find them. But if you are new or it's tricky, just wrap your yarn and go straight into the space. So one double crochet into the space, in between each post of the row below. So now you don't have to look for your stitches. We're just putting one into each space. Like this all the way along. So just wiggle your fingers until you find the space and then move them over one post to find the next space. And just do that all the way along until you get to the end of the row. And that is what our stitches are going to be like the whole way. Another thing you can do while we're here is take a stitch marker and just pop it into that for the second chain we made. I can find it. Just there. That's because we have to work into that chain when we get back to this end. You'll be able to see it. We'll do it together. But if you are worried about it, put a stitch marker in the second chain you made for turning, that second chain on the end. That is always gonna be your last stitch when you get to that side. So now keep going one double crochet into each space, going all the way along your row, and I'll meet you when you get to the end. Getting close to the end, I've gone into this space, there's another space on this side. So we're gonna go straight into that one. This is the last space. So that gives us a pretty good straight edge. Chain two, one, two. Now go ahead and grab yourself a stitch marker. While we're here. And I'm just gonna put it into that second chain right underneath my hook. So that is where I'm gonna to have to go into when I get back to this end. So now turn your work. Wrap your yarn and we're gonna go straight into this first space and make our double crochet. And a one double crochet into each space going all the way back. So into each space, double crochet. Oops, make sure you get into every space. There's a lot of them in there. Just wiggle your fingers and you'll find your spaces. So one into each space. If you skip one, you can always add a double crochet in the next row. Or if you make two into one spot, you can also take one away in the next row. Just skip over it because no one's gonna see your stitches. That's the beautiful thing of this pattern. So keep going, I'll meet you at the end of this row. Keep working your way all the way to the last space. 
where our stitch marker is, our last double crochet, chain two, one, two, and move that stitch marker up to the chain right underneath the hook. That's going to be our last stitch when we get to that end. And now just turn your work and go straight into that very first space. And every space going along and you'll just keep turning in the same way. You want to make sure you have the same number of stitches at the end. It's super easy to start dropping a stitch at the end or adding a stitch and then that is really hard to recover. You're, it won't be a rectangle, it'll be a very funny shape and difficult to fix. And this yarn is also difficult to frog or to rip out your stitches. It can get a bit tangled up. It's totally possible. I've totally done it like way too many times. But if you just work into the spaces and go slowly and then um, fudge if you need to fudge, but just really take care when you do your turning that everything is lining up and you have your 10 stitches in between your stitch marker approximately, but you want to keep a nice straight edge on both edges. That's the only place you can really mess up. So just be careful when you're doing that and I will meet you back when it's time to join another ball of yarn. When you run out of yarn, you finish your ball of yarn, you can just start a new one. If you are familiar with magic knot, you can do a magic knot. You just do it loosely on both sides and then pull it together and tighten. If you are not familiar with magic knot, this is not the yarn to use for it, but I do use magic knot for mine. The safe way of doing it is to start your double crochet. So into the next space or the next stitch, depending how you're doing it. Start your double crochet, leave it on your hook, grab your next yarn loop of yarn on your hook and finish that stitch with your new yarn. Now you're going to drop your tail and hold your other tail down on the back so you're holding both of those down, pinching them so they don't wiggle around. And now keep crocheting with your new yarn. Just like that, one into every space and you have started your new ball of yarn. My shoulder shrug is 16 inches wide and when I fold it in half, it is a nice width for my arm. So we're going to cut a tail long enough to sew our sleeve together. So you just want to triple your sleeve length, <laughs> whatever your sleeve length is going to be. Let's make three lengths of yarn. That's plenty for sewing it together. Now we'll chain one just to secure your yarn and pull that big long tail through. And snug it down so now it is tightened on this side. And now you want to lay it out nice and flat on top of each other so your edges are nice and lined up all the way along. Just kind of like patting it down and getting it to behave. I'll just fold up this side so it's a bit manageable. And now go ahead and get your darning needle. I like these clover bent tip ones. They just seem to go into the yarn really easy. And the eye of the needle is really easy to thread. And it also, the yarn doesn't fall out. So that is why I like them so much. So just thread your needle. This is the side we're going to be sewing up together. So I'm just going to poke my needle in through the other side. Just the opposite stitch. Just to hold it in place. Make sure you actually get a strand of yarn. You don't want to be going into the fuzz. And with this textured yarn, we could even just whip stitch it. So into one loop of both sides. And with whip stitch, oops. Let 
you want to be going in from one side and out the other side for each stitch. So if you're going away and towards yourself, keep going that way. Just the same direction every time. One side, one stitch, and the other. You don't want to make it too tight so that it's all cinched up, but you don't want to have too much tension. So every once in a while, just give it a little tug back. And now keep working along your sleeve. The exact measurement of how long you're going to stitch for or how much you're going to sew together depends on your arm length, how long you made your shrug and your body shape. But we're just going to go up about 16 inches and then try it on. So keep going, whip stitch all the way and I'll meet you when we get to 16 inches. This sleeve is joined up 16 inches. So just get it laying flat again and flip it over on top of the other. So they're lined up on the sleeve end, the open end. And here it's just here. So now we're gonna use stitch markers on the other side just to guesstimate. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker in the same area as where my seam is on this sleeve I have joined. And then I'm just gonna put a couple stitch markers along the way just to pinch it together so we can try it on. The top side is sewn together, bottom side is pinned together. Now give it a try on. We're just gonna put our arms straight into the armholes. So if you're happy with yours, go ahead and stitch together the other sleeve. Do it the exact same way. I'm just gonna put a red stitch marker in the last spot. So that's, that is gonna mark when I need to stop. So I don't really have to worry about it or think about it as I stitch up this side. So do this one the same way around. Just whip stitch loosely, a relaxed whip stitch all the way up along this side. get to your stitch marker just go through you can try it on again to make sure just make a little little old-fashioned knot and then just weave in your tail but I'm just gonna make sure that I love it and I'll try it on again right now so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We do tutorials, podcasts, and live chats every week. Love to have you join us. You can also follow me on Instagram at Secret Yarnery, or our Facebook group, The Secret Yarnery Crochet Community, or our page, The Secret Yarnery. So thanks so much for watching, everybody, and stay hooked. I'm trying to get up for it rains. Have you seen the sky? It's like blue over there. I'll show you. Look at that sky. I'm telling you. Okay, bye.